Yellowstone National Park officials have just announced an interesting discovery. They've reported that an area which is estimated to be the size of Chicago is inflating and deflating, with them saying that they've been observing this uplift for the last few decades. Last year, officials revealed that the region around the North Gaza Basin is over 5 inches higher, and this is due to the magma underneath it, an event which at the time left researchers baffled. After using satellite radar and GPS data, the experts discovered that the ground was deforming due to magma being trapped beneath it. Yellowstone National Park scientists said that they were keeping a close eye on the deformation, and said that as the magma was making its way to the surface, the pressure that was being created was forcing the ground above it to lift. Although these magma intrusions across Yellowstone aren't exactly a rare occurrence, it was the first time that scientists were able to track one of these magma episodes. This uplift was first detected back in 1996, but scientists said that the area stopped increasing in size around 2014. Following an earthquake that hit the region, the area then started to sink back to its original size, but data now shows that the uplift is once again increasing in size. Dan Duzurin, who is one of the lead scientists who studied this event, said the following. Modelling suggests that the 1996-2004 uplift was caused by an intrusion of magma around 14 kilometres, or 8.7 miles beneath Norris. When magma intrudes the crust it cools, crystallises and releases gas that has been dissolved in the melt. Gas escape lowers pressure in the magma, causing the surface to subside, but rising gases can become trapped under an impenetrable layer of rock, causing the kind of rapid uplift seen at Norris from late 2013 until the magnitude 4.9 earthquake in March 2014. It seems likely the quake created microfractures that allow gases to escape upward again, resulting in subsidence that ended in 2015. The third uplift episode from 2016 to 2018 suggests rising gases became trapped again, this time at a slightly shallower depth. He continued by saying that these uplifts are interesting to study, and helps us to better understand activity inside Yellowstone, and that people shouldn't worry about them, saying the following. For the first time, we've been able to track an entire episode of magma intrusion, degassing a gas ascent to the near surface. For those in the know that's awesome, not alarming. End quote. Another piece of recent news was that a surge of magma was detected coming into the Yellowstone system, mainly a Yellowstone lake. Yanavko, who are made up of scientists, educators and professionals, released a spectrogram which shows a surge of magma. The red shows the heat of the magma, with the blue surroundings showing the cooler areas. Something interesting to note is that the researchers pointed out that this region in which the magma flow was detected was also one of the regions that was hit by various earthquakes. Scientists have said that although they have seismic trackers around the park, and that they try to monitor as much activity as possible, the truth is that they cannot predict when the next super eruption is going to happen. Given the fact that there's no real way to prepare or prevent an event of this scale, it could very well be a countdown clock for the end of the human race and life on Earth. Despite this, Researchers are still working to devise ways of potentially releasing this trapped energy in small amounts to prevent such a large event from taking place, but this would take funding and technology not available yet, and will be a part of one of the largest construction and development projects of the 21st century. Geologist Dr. Robert Christensen revealed an interesting discovery during a documentary. He said the following, one of the most interesting additional pieces of data came along after the early fieldwork and the completion of the initial geologic studies. Bob Smith at the University of Utah was interested in seeing if we could look for signs of contemporary deformation in the Yellowstone caldera. He'd recognised some of these indications, particularly in changes in lake levels of different parts of Yellowstone Lake, and because it's so large, he felt there were indications that the lake basin itself was being tilted. 
Because of this, the lake level was rising at one end and falling at the other. End quote. Dr. Christensen explained how his colleague made the discovery, going on to say the following. He was interested in seeing whether we could actually measure this by some direct means. So one of the things I did at the time was to get funding together, to get the USGS Topography Division involved. We felt that with as much deformation as there was, that there should be measurable changes in elevations in the park. We finally got the funding together and got the survey done, and the data was provided to Bob Smith and his group, and they in turn integrated it into a series of elevation changes throughout the caldera. They demonstrated that the caldera over a 50 year period had come up around two thirds of a metre. Either the magma was intruding the crust, or it was heating the hydrothermal system, causing it to expand and elevate the crust. Something was definitely going on. End quote. Another interesting discovery was made back in 2019, when researchers said that a 465 mile long piece of molten rock is rising, and it was happening directly underneath Yellowstone. Scientists had this to say, We are closely monitoring a 465 mile long piece of molten rock, rising below the Yellowstone caldera, We've discovered that Yellowstone's magma chamber is slowly rising each year. The danger will be if the plume starts liquefying and moving up any faster. Typically when these eruptions begin, they begin from a certain event, then they get larger as they move along the fracture system. The entire sequence that formed the last Yellowstone eruption may have taken as little as two weeks. End quote. So what do you make of these recent discoveries around Yellowstone? And when do you think the supervolcano is going to erupt next? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.